Hello and you're very welcome to Geography Talks with me, Tom O'Cahill. This episode is part of our podcast series where we discuss the issues of the day in all things geography, as well as helping students prepare for their geography exams. In today's podcast, we will be discussing the recent seismic activity around Mount Niragongo, a volcano located in the Democratic Republic of Congo. We'll talk about why this seismic activity is happening. I will answer some listener questions. As always, if you want to send in any questions or queries, you can email me at geographytalksireland at gmail.com. We'll get to them at the end of the next episode. But first, at 7 p.m. on the 22nd of May this year, 2021, reports came in about an eruption of Mount Niragongo in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Lava began flowing towards the city of Goma, which is about 20 kilometers south of the volcano, and the city was evacuated. Now, the lava flow eventually stopped on the northern outskirts of the city, meaning that the airport and much of the built up area of the city were unaffected. However, one of the main roads coming out of Goma was covered in lava, and this cut off access to the city of Beni to the north. BBC News reported that 3,000 residents of Goma fled across the border to Rwanda, and it's reported that about 25,000 other residents also fled from the city, and that's according to a UNICEF report. Following the initial eruption, aftershocks were experienced in the city and the wider region, which indicated heightened levels of seismic activity. And indeed, three days later, on May 25th, a magnitude 5.3 earthquake hit the city, destroying many buildings and also leading to fears that a further, more powerful volcanic eruption would occur. Now, while they didn't get another volcanic eruption, two days later, on May 27th, a number of tremors hit the region, the strongest uh, measuring a magnitude of 4.9. Thankfully, this has been the last piece of seismic activity in the region since. And on June 7th this year, the government began the phased return of residents to Goma. It's August 13th now, and over two months since the phased return began, but the volcano still has the erupting status, meaning there's a real risk of another serious volcanic eruption at any time. So far, 37 people are missing and are presumed dead, and over 1,000 homes and buildings have been destroyed. So there's a lot to unpack in there, and I think it's best we start with Mount Niragongo itself. It's spelled N-Y-I-R-A-G-O-N-G-O. Standing at 3,740 metres, it's a stratovolcano, which in simple terms means it's formed from layers of ash, lava, and other volcanic materials. Stratovolcanoes tend to be quite steep, and eruptions can be very explosive. It is an active volcano, and there's been 34 recorded eruptions since 1882. Urugongo is considered to be one of the world's most dangerous volcanoes because it's very fast lava flow. And when it last erupted back in 2002, the lava flow reached speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour. This is because the lava is alkaline, meaning it has extremely low viscosity, making it almost as fluid as tap from a water. At the speed of this, combined with the lava temperatures of up to 1,090 degrees Celsius, make for a deadly combination, particularly during unpredicted eruptions. By now, any of you that have studied volcanoes or plate tectonics know that there is no plate boundary in this part of Africa, and you're trying to figure out how in God's name is one of the world's deadliest volcanoes located here. Normally, or indeed as standard, volcanoes form in three different locations, where plates separate and the magma escapes onto the Earth's surface, where plates collide and the subducted plate melts, welds up, and forms a volcano on the surface, or hotspots where the magma melts the crust and escapes onto the surface. We see this in Hawaii, the string of Hawaiian islands form over a hotspot below the Pacific plate. I'm sure some of you are smiling to yourselves right now and saying that it is a hotspot, but alas, you are wrong. Mount Niragongo is somewhat of an outlier and owes its existence and indeed activity to the African Great Rift. This is where the African plate has been torn in two by very strong convection currents in the mantle. There's so much going on here that you could nearly do a series on just the African rift. But for now, just to explain that the rift is constantly extending and opening up, so much so that it's estimated in a few million years, it will split entirely and form two tectonic plates. And the African continent, as we know it, will be divided by a new ocean. I suppose if you want to get an idea of what this may look like, take a look at Madagascar, because once upon a time, the island of Madagascar was attached to the continent of Africa. And over millions of years, 
the plate split and it was pulled away. Now, Mount Niragongo is located on the new opening in the African plate and magma is welling up from more than 100 kilometers below the Earth's surface. And then, just like all other volcanoes, the magma erupts onto the Earth's surface, cools to form igneous rock, and over time builds up to form the volcano. Now, while we're still waiting on the report for the cause of this year's eruption, we do know that the 2002 eruption was caused by a sudden open opening of the rift, and lava actually flowed from a number of fractures along the rift. So believe it or not, the destruction that's caused by this year's eruption, it really does pale in comparison to what the region has experienced in the not so distant past. Uh, it's certainly going to be an interesting geological feature and definitely one to watch over the next few months. Uh, it's not a volcano that gets widespread news coverage, I have to say. So do keep an eye out online on some of the volcano tracking websites to stay up to date. For now, though, we're going to move on because I have some questions that I'm going to try and answer. And if you are studying geography for your junior or leaving cert, then this section is an especially good one for you. Uh, the first question goes, while on holidays in Tenerife, I collected a rock from the volcano there. I'm wondering what type of rock it is, and do we get other types of rocks from volcanoes? Now, that is a good question, but uh, unfortunately, there isn't a one-word answer, because there's actually quite a lot of volcanic rocks around Tenerife. Now, I'm going to assume, because uh, you were there on holidays, the volcano you visited was Mount Teda. Uh, but now it's a beautiful landscape. It's very lunar-esque, like being on the moon. I visited myself a few years ago. But the, uh, the rock that you picked up, depending on its color, could be a number of different ones. So firstly, if it's a dark gray or a black color, then what you've got is basalt. Uh, now, that's one of the more common igneous rocks associated with volcanoes. And it's the same rock type as the Giant's Causeway here in Ireland. Even though it's unlikely, you might also have a more reddish colored rock. Now, this is basalt as well but it has turned that reddish color due to the oxidation from coming into contact with groundwater. Uh, but nonetheless, it's a lovely rock and something to definitely keep on the mantelpiece. Now there is another one as well. So if it's more white or a sort of a light gray, and what you've got is pumice. Now pumice is a very fine grained igneous rock. It looks almost like a sponge and you generally get it after an explosive eruption. Now, if that's the type of rock that you have, then you might actually be in trouble because one of the rules of the National Park in Tenerife is that you can't take any of the white pumice rocks. So maybe keep that one to yourselves. Uh, but they're the rocks that you find in the air. They're the rocks you generally get from volcanoes as well. So hopefully you can put a name on your one now. Uh, now, as we come to the end of this episode, I want to fit in one last question. I'll keep it short this time. It asks, how many volcanoes are there in the world? Um, <laughs> well, I'll try to keep it simple. There's no simple answer to this. Of the volcanoes that we know, there's about 1,500 of them. Now, these are the volcanoes that have erupted in historical times. So where we have a record of an eruption happening, there is most likely thousands more volcanoes that we don't have records of erupting that are probably gone extinct now. But then on top of that, there's likely thousands of underwater volcanoes that we know nothing about. And most likely we'll never know anything about it unless they poke their head above the water at some point in the future. New volcanoes are popping up every day all over the world, particularly at the Pacific Ring of Fire, which is a hot spot for volcanic activity. Excuse the, excuse the pun. Uh, but we're leaving it there for this podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope above all else, you found it interesting and educational. If you have any questions, send them in to me at geographytalksireland.gmail.com. But until next time, Sloan, August Gurmagos.